So here we are with part five of Spring Walk, and I'm Karen Olari. We've been working on this little country road, and in this part, we're going to be working on the fun part. We're going to be doing the flowers in the foreground. This was a, a whole roadway full of daffodils. There were yellow ones and white ones, and uh, they were so springy and fun. So we've done all this background work to set the stage for these flowers and now we're going to start working on them. First we're working on the foliage for the flowers and these we laid in some bright greens and then put some now we're working on the foliage of the daffodils and I spent quite a lot of time looking at them and the daffodils you know have more of a bluer foliage than the green grass or it's, it's sort of a blue green color so I put in a darker blue-green as the base for some of these little clumps of daffodils and then came in with some more ultramarine blue and white, a little bit of red, a little bit of gold to dull it up a little bit. And I'm just flicking my brush strokes thinking about the way daffodils grow. Not. Um, specifically drawing in any particular stems or leaves but I'm using the brush itself and the, the rough nature of the canvas and of the bristle brush to create little lines that mimic this feeling of, of the foliage on these flowers. I've, went, I've gone with a green that's much bluer this time, phthalo blue in it gold in it um, to give that foliage, that greenish gray foliage where the light hits it, gives it uh, a real pretty bluish green color. You know a lot of times people look at a green scene, especially living here in Oregon, many of the scenes that I paint are just green on green on green, but it's amazing when you stop and really look at the greens. Um, how many shades of green there are and, and how very distinct those different shades are. So now I'm mixing up a, a light bluish color. In any painting, um, when you, especially when you have a blue sky like this, you're going to get blue in the landscape. But also, you're going to get this, actually the color that I mixed up here, this sort of a purplish blue. I'm laying down the shadow colors of the daffodils. These are white daffodils, but obviously I can't just go in and dot a bunch of white, dots of white paint on there because it wouldn't look natural. And if you actually look at the daffodils, you know, every individual one has shadow side and a light side. So you're going to start like we did with the foliage from dark to light. So I'm laying down little bits of this medium value bluish purple. It's, it's fairly light, but um, it's not as light as white. So it's because it's going to be the shadow side. And as these flowers move into the distance, you see how they just become a line, just, just a very delicate little hint of that color in the far background. And even that, that middle area of flowers that I'm mostly working on right now, those are far enough away that you're not going to see any distinct little flowers. It's the edges, again, are going to be soft back there. So I'm just laying in little patches of these colors. And I just laid in a, a shadow yellow color for the yellow daffodils. So I added quin gold and red to that yellow to make a, a, a shadowy yellow color and laid some of that in, which will be the shadows of these yellow daffodils and it'll be the way the yellow daffodils look in the shadowed areas next to the trees. A little bit on the right, always using the same color in, in different areas in the painting to integrate it. I've come back with a brighter yellow, it's a very bright light yellow, and just dab that in there. 
Now I'm going to work on these front flowers. Again, I'm starting with my shadow color. I've switched over now to my little quarter inch flat soft uh, brush because now finally I've come to an area in the painting where hard edges are justified. This is the foreground of the painting. This is the focal point of the painting. And these little flowers, I don't want all their edges to be hard, but I want them to have some hard edges on them. And I'm not drawing a daffodil. I'm, I'm using the shape of the brush, laying it down, and using the edges that that brush makes to define the way the edges of the flowers without trying to lay down five petals in a center. You know, you just you want to keep it loose and keep it light and use the brush stroke itself to create a hard edge and a soft edge. If you lay it down, you'll get a hard edge where you lay the brush down and then you pull it up and away and you'll get a soft edge. I spent a lot of time looking at the reference photo and looking at the daffodils and the way they hang their heads and the way the petals lie and I looked at it for quite a while before I started painting them and then I painted them as quickly as I could and don't go back in and redefine or mess with a stroke once you put it down just put it down and leave it now I've gone back in with a very light color and it's got a little bit of yellow in it. You're never going to use straight white except in very, very small places maybe. There's always going to be some tinge of color to your light. So this has a very uh, light yellow tinge to it. It's the areas of the white daffodils in sunlight. So I'm just continuing to kind of look at my reference photo for a feeling of daffodil and then touching along where I've Put the, the blue shadow color touching one edge of that shape to give it an edge where the sunlight is hitting that flower. Moving to a shadowed color yellow again because all these little the white daffodils had little yellow centers and then I had some yellow daffodils as well in there. So I'm just going to tap in some, some of this grayed down yellow color, the shadow yellow color. I'm going to use it both as a the shadow base for the yellow daffodils and the shadow base for the tiny centers of the white daffodils. And again, you don't want to go to each daffodil and put a little round circle. You don't want to do that because it'll look too overdone. You just want to flick them in there. Go quickly and get the scent of daffodils. And as they move back in along the road, they're going to be smaller and they're going to have virtually no hard edges back there. So now coming in with a brighter, lighter yellow, I've used uh, quite a bit of my cool light yellow color, which is a Hansa yellow light and some white. It's just getting that cool light yellow where the sun is hitting the yellow daffodils, where the sun's hitting the centers of the daffodils. You know, I always think music helps when you're doing things like this. You want, you want enough in there for it to, to read as flowers, but you don't want to overdo it. It's a fine line. And it's so fun to do, it's very easy to get carried away. Back in with some of my gray shadow color. And then I'm coming in with my very brightest white accents. Just tiny little. I'm barely got quite a bit of paint on the brush. And I'm just touching the brush. I'm not drawing with the brush. I'm not making real defined shapes. I'm just touching and flicking the brush on the canvas. When you have shadowed 
areas like this. The foliage in the shadow is going to overlap the background area a little bit and then the lit area in front will overlap the shadow area. As I was putting in the roadway earlier, I put some of that brownish grayish color off to the right and uh, I left it there as if there's a little pathway that goes off that way or, or, or something. I thought it gave a nice backdrop to the, the little bunch of flowers that's right in the front. Just tapping in some of my lighter color very delicately and without, without any edges or definition back there at all. As I looked at this little fence, I realized, you know, some of the flowers are going to be growing through to the other side of the fence. And I didn't want the fence to seem like a wall, so I added a little bit that was growing through and a little hint of that, some flowers that might be growing against the base of the background fence as well. But then coming back in, because that's in the distance, and softening all those edges. Again, you notice as my palette, as I progress in my painting time, all these colors are actually dry on the palette. So as I mix up my piles, I'll go in an area that's similar to the color that I'm mixing, but at this point it doesn't really matter because the colors underneath are dry, so I can just mix a new color on top. Coming in with a very grayed bluish green again, this is the foliage of the daffodils kind of color. I put foliage down and then flowers and now I'm putting a little bit of the foliage on top to give, again, just to give dimension. Using my liner brush here to get those little flicks of daffodil stems. Now I'm going to move on to another fun area. Coming to the end of this little painting, we only have one more part after this one. I hope you're in, enjoying the process of painting this spring day. And I hope I'm inspiring you to paint your own version of it, or a version of your own spring day. I'm starting on the blossoms in the tree. And they were actually pretty fairly light, but I'm going to intensify the color in these blossoms. And of course, now I'm starting with the darkest color, laying down that dark, and then I'll put the light colors on top. I have the moss already on the tree. And what I want to be super careful of is to keep this, these blossoms airy and light. I don't want big globs of color, and I also don't want polka dots. So I want to keep it light and spring-like and airy, but not so light and, and dotty that it's polka dots on the, on the canvas. So I'm laying in this color that I've done with um, my quinacridone magenta, which is a great flower color base. Uh, a little lizard crimson, a little bit of cad yellow, just to make it a slightly warmed up version of this magenta, but still very chromatic as the background. And you can see all those choices I made with keeping the, the gray trees cool and quiet and keeping that mid-tone evergreen tree very grayed and darker is what's going to help these blossoms pop out. So that is the end of part five and we'll finish these blossoms up in part six.